Remember, life is a journey, and whether you walk that journey alone or with someone, we all experience unexpected roadblocks and failures along the way. It's not what you do when you fall, it's what you do when you get up. So no matter what life throws at you, always remember, still I rise. On this week's show, our next guest is a phenomenal woman with an incredible story of how God transformed her life for the better. She was a former dancehall artist and was most known for being the second place winner of one of Jamaica's most competitive talent shows, the Magnum Kings and Queens competition. She formerly went by the name Destiny Sparta and Psycho Doll Please help me welcome Kimberly Cuvely to tell it all. Kimberly, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It's such an honor to have you here on our show, and I'm really, really, really excited to talk to you. And I just want to thank you for taking the time and you know to be here with me and just to give God glory. You know, so we're, without any further ado, we're going to just dive into it. And um, mm-hmm. so I'm going to ask you because the viewers are curious: Who was Kimberly before the? music and the fame and everything who were you before uh, just um down to earth easy going um grew up in coral gardens but i grew up very diverse so you have sometimes i'd be in the country and sometimes i'd be in flankers with my uncle and his wife and cousins so i grew up very diverse knowing every kind of life you okay. know and um I went to Montego Bay. I went to Carl, um, Cardinal de Avenue Primary School. From there, Westwood High School, Mount Alvernia High School. Then I went to Montego Bay High School, left with seven CXCs. Went to Montego Bay Community College, did pre-UE, pre-UE business. And then I was working. I worked at Western Union Pelican for about, about two years or so, or three, maybe. And uh, from there, I went to Music Business Technology Institute, and uh, then I ventured out doing music. Okay, so let's let's talk Magnum Kings and Queen. How did mm-hmm. you end up on the show and became the second runner-up? Right, you were the second runner-up of, of this um, competition. Yes, I was. Um, I always knew I wanted to do music from I was a little girl, and uh, the opportunity came around and. A friend of mine said, go and enter the competition. And I was shy. The first year, I didn't do it. She, she told me about it the first year. And I said, no, I was too shy. So I stepped back and just watched what it was about. And then the second year, it came ar- around. And I decided that I was going to try. Because I used to be shy, very shy to perform. And I said, you know what? I'm going to enter the competition. Because I think that would help me to break out of my shell. Okay, so a lot of people would wish to have the breakthrough you had in the in the dancehall arena, you know. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people be thinking or saying you made a, a, a like a wrong move by leaving dancehall and to follow Christ. What would you say to somebody who is really thinking like that, who really don't really understand? You will think it's a wrong move when you think from a carnal mind, when uh, you're just after the things of the flesh and. The, the, the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh because dance hall is a very tough industry. Tough. It can be very draining emotionally, physically, financially. So um, I think a lot of people don't know. They just see and think it's all glitz and glam. But it's a very tough industry. There's not much love. It's ego-driven. And uh, I didn't enjoy it anymore after a while. So I had to leave. And uh, for people who don't understand, they would have to go through it to understand. Now, looking back, has it ever occurred to you that this space might not be for me? Or did it ever occur to you looking back now while you were in the arena? Um, at, In the latter end, but before it's all I ever wanted to do. Um, I remember sometimes when I was in class, in, at Mount Alvernia, I would be writing lyrics instead of writing notes, writing lyrics to Lady Star song, fling it up from the left, fling it up from the right. 
and end up the teacher took my book, end up in the principal office. I always knew that I wanted to do music, and I've seen little areas where I thought where I saw that there was not much love. Um, I was recruited even before Magnum Kings and Queens. I was recruited to do backup singing for Mr. Vegas and. Uh, he, I remember during that time he was sick. I think he had some some acid reflux or some ulcer business going on. And it was close to some fest and we went to look for him in the hospital. And I remember his manager at the time, all he was concerned about was his performance and the upcoming tours. It was, nobody was really focused on his health and how he was doing. And at that time, they were even contemplating him going on stage on a, on a, on a, on a, it was a stretcher or a wheelchair, I think. Oh. And I was like, wow, there is no love. Where is the concern for his health? And I remember when I was leaving out of that room, I, I always travel with my Bible. Long time I walk with God, you know. Always, I had a little green New Testament Bible and I slipped it under his pillow. I hope him did read it. <laughs> but I slipped it under his pillow, hoping that he could read and find some comfort because I saw that there was not much concern for him. And that that opened my eyes like, maybe, maybe, I didn't think maybe it's not for me, but I saw how how cutthroat the industry was at that time. And you had no plans of leaving in that in that time? No, if I did not get deliverance, I would still be in dance hall. Yeah. So yeah. many things happened to me along the way. I mean, I got through some things, I got, through, I got through some things that were heartbreaking. And even then I'm a fighter, I'm of a fighting spirit. So I'm always not make that get to me, I just a push and yeah. because yeah, yeah, sorry to cut so, you. I, I can see that you have a fighting spirit. Even from the competition, <laughs> you, you just yeah. went out there and, you know, you have that fighting spirit. You know, no matter what comes at you, I can see it. I can feel it. And I can tell you it's a long time God has been trying to reach you because look, long, long you time. your Bible, you know, and you were led to put that Bible under his pillow. You know, so mm -hmm. even though we're sometimes in the world, God knows that he's going to use you in the latter end. You know, he knows he's going to use okay. you. And we do have that spirit within us to do good, even though we're in the world. But we think sometimes that because we're doing good, it's okay in God's sight. What would you say to a person who has that mindset? Because a whole lot of people think like that. Because I'm a good human being, it's fine. I will just, I can live over here and do this, but continue to be a good human being. And so it work. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. It's either you're going to choose good or evil. You understand? And let me tell you, with the things that I've experienced, it's better you choose good. A lot of times people want the benefits what God have to give, but they don't want God. And I think that is just wrong. That is just wrong. And you have sometimes, I find where... People will pray and because they don't get what they want in like this, they give up on God. But you know, oh, we're born in a sin, you know, and we sin, we sin right through and we not give up on sin, but we don't want to choose God and stay with God. Me not understand. You see, and I want to, to, to follow up on what you just said. When people pray to God and they don't receive what they're, they're asking of God, on their timing, they give up. And then God, right. under, you know when God tells you about the, the torns that was put on solid ground and all that kind of stuff, that's what he's talking about. You mm -hmm. understand, you can't come to God only because you want something. You have to change your mindset. You have to literally make it become it's because you love him and it's because you want what you want from him, which is his love. You know, right. you can't just want something, blessings. And that's why lots of people, they get, they get frustrated because they pray they fast and they're expecting something in return and when they don't get it their faith is being wavered mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. cannot waver your faith so I'll tell anybody that, that would watch this video no matter what you're going through no matter your emotions you feel never waver the faith that you have in God because it's your faith that is that would that, that what's called amen you know amen so, so destiny I'm gonna ask you you started out as destiny then you went to destiny Sparta and then you went to psychodal 
why the change and why psychodol all right it's because of the youtube search engine um i started with destiny but when you type in destiny in a youtube search engine the, you would mostly see destiny's child come up so to differentiate and to make it easier to find at the time i started to um i was a part of tamalese camp so then they added this part to it so it could be easy to find later on you know um i uh, my contract was up and uh, i tried to rebrand i tried destiny qop queen of the pop <laughs> um but people still held on to that part so they didn't want to let it go and uh, like i would get shows and they would say listen nobody no 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 qop as part of them know so this way i work with and they would put that on the flyer and um later on I did a song, Nicki Minaj had a song, I think, yeah, it was Chun Li. And I did a song on the rhythm. And the first thing that came to my mind when I heard the rhythm, what just came out was, you never know me head mad. Why you think my name Psycho Doll? And uh, I did that song and the girl, they loved it. And uh, that Psycho Doll sticked <laughs> after that song. And I changed, I, I added it on my Instagram handle. And you had a lot of lots of girls who started to call themselves psychodal and 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 that's how that Monica came about. Okay, I understand. So you have worked with the kings and queens of dancehall, you know. So you rub shoulders with the the top people in dancehall. So mm -hmm. and you were making a stamp for yourself and making a name for yourself. So the question then is, why just leave it all behind and just turn your life around? What propelled you for change? Oh, I said before there was no love, but I, I still wanted to do it, you know, but I felt drained after a while. But you see, when that Sunday, when I went to church and got deliverance, that was the time when I knew there was no going back. When I saw what God took me out of, there was no going back. So it was it, it was more of God's doing than even mine. Mm -hmm. It was his doing more than mine. Do you care to lament on what he took you out of so, so the viewers can understand? I was, I became an alcoholic, a drug addict, and, um, you know, I was just burdened, burned, oppressed. And uh, <laughs> even the songs that I used to do, the violent songs, like when you're in sin, you know, it's like one veil over your eye, you don't even realize what you're doing. There is life and death in the power of the tongue. And I was not singing anything good, anything positive, anything to motivate people. I wasn't putting out any good in the universe. Um, even the, the last song, huh, one of the last songs that I did that, um, oh Lord, huh, that I was supposed to release was a song about me being a lesbian. And... Uh, that's the, that's that's what I wanted to put out there, and it was all for clothes. You understand? So, <laughs> Father God, thank you. Yeah, but um, really, I was going down the wrong path. I was going down a path of destruction, and uh, God just snatched me up before it was too late. Uh, what happened? Actually, you know, I, I've spoken about this several times i went I, I i was out on a boat listen one friday night i was talking to the producer of that same song that i'm talking about and we were talking about the plans to release it and the video and all of that and the following day i was on the road whole time drinking smoking the whole works went home and i was just i just felt tormented i went to sleep with my mother and I asked her to pray for me and I asked her to play the Cindy Trim Atomic Warfare Prayer. And this was how I started to react. When she said, when she hit certain points, that's how my body started to react. And I knew something was wrong. And the following day, I went to church with her and the pastor prayed for me, laid hands on me, and whatever was there left right and from that day i didn't have the urge to smoke to drink none of that that addiction left 
that same Sunday. And I said, you know something? Me now look back around this, so I got me a work with right now. I got me as a right show. And I've never looked back since. Yes, yeah, so you've been... So even... I, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry ahead. to cut no, you it's off. fine. It's for you. Yes. I was talking to that same producer the other day, and he said, when he heard that I got baptized and, and all that, he didn't believe. He thought I was lying. He thought it was a lie because we spoke the Friday and then the Sunday. I'm a new person. But God can do it just like that. That's how God works. You know, when it's time, he moves swiftly, you know. And and, and, right. and, and and what I want you to do is, like, a lot of people might think, you know, because life throws things at us as human beings. And if we're not strong enough, we turn to all kind of things, thinking that and hoping mm -hmm. that that will solve the issue. What advice you do, would you give to the youths who might be going through a hard time in their life? And, and think that smoking the weed and the spliff all throughout the day to take away their pain that they're going through. What advice would you give to them? Uh, Try God. Try God. The, the smoking and the drinking, it won't heal the wound. It only masks it for a while. But you need to go through, you need to go through healing. The weed, the rum, no pharma pill, nothing can take away the hurt and pain but God, but Jesus, but the Holy Spirit. So choose God. Try him. Pray. Pour out your heart and your soul. Don't lean on these things because people don't realize either, you know. I didn't realize either that alcohol, alcohol is derived from the word alcohol, which means flesh-eating demon or flesh-eating spirit. Alcohol is called spirit. Because when we drink, you notice sometimes, well, I don't know if you're used to drink. It turn into a whole nother person. It's like a spirit take over. Sometimes when you're blackout and you don't remember anything, that's a dark entity that has come to fill the place where God is supposed to be. So I would tell you, leave it alone. Because there were times when we used to drink and, and, and smoke. I'm a very laid back person. You don't really hear my mouth, especially in a group setting. I'm usually someone who just sits back and observes. And when me drink the liquor and pop the pill, me turn in a whole different character. Not me anymore. So I will tell you that just stay grounded. Stay grounded and search, seek for God. Put that all away and don't depend on that. Because you will destroy your, you, you destroy your health and you will destroy your future as well. And you will make bad decisions. You see, Destiny, this one hits home because we, we have somewhat of a similar story. And I know that's why you could resonate with my interview I did because you mm -hmm. knew you could feel it. And it's the same reason, you know, I could I can resonate with what you've been through. And I know mm -hmm. exactly what God did with you. And I know exactly what it took for you to wake up because we are very stubborn people, you know, <laughs> and, and because we're so strong because he made us like that. We go through mm -hmm. so much things in life and then we just bounce right back and go into the cycle. So you see what God did to you and to myself is what we needed to wake up and turn our lives to him because we have a That's greater right. reason in this world. So you see, I'm going to go back on the alcohol. It's the same mm -hmm. thing that happened to me. I started to use the alcohol. I'm, I'm from Jamaica and I don't know how to, I don't know how to make a weed myself. Nothing. I don't, I, I wasn't interested in drugs, weed, alcohol, nothing. I wasn't mm -hmm. interested in it, but there came a, came a point in my life when I was here and, and I just started using the drugs and I wanted it because I'm a person, I can't be addicted to things. And so I thought, then I became addicted to the mm -hmm. weed all the time. And I feel like every time when I'll take the weed, I become somebody else. And then I, I, I would always say, oh, it's just fun. It's just a moment. No, all those times when you're not yourself and you're acting out of character like you normally would not, those are demons taking Amen. over your body, doing what they want you to do. So if you ever feel like you have a friend and you're in a group settings and everybody's laughing and giggling, those moments are not y'all. And I want y'all to understand. And you know how I confirm that? Because in 2019, when I first did weed cake and I got really high, you know, 
I became this whole other person. I had no more control. And I said to God, I prayed to God and I said, God, leave me alone. I don't want nothing else to do with you. I need to be an evil person now. That was the devil Whoa. taking control of me. And I have that mm -hmm. video, but I'm waiting on the Lord to tell me to post it. You know, but mm -hmm. so, so, so it hit home when you said, you know, it's a spirit, the spirit, mm -hmm. the alcohol is spirit, you know. So uh, as you said, uh, it's spirit and that's just not the right way to go. So for you guys or anybody that would watch the video, please just try something else. The Lord, try him, you know. <laughs> that's right. So Destiny, in the light of the um, the cult pastor um, in Montego Bay, um, what would you give, what advice would you give to somebody who is seeking spiritual guidance or understanding? I would say, um, pray to God, ask him for discernment, read your Bible. I think in this time, <laughs> the Antichrist agenda is real and it's here. That's why you can find a person like a Kevin Smith in a church. So I think in this season, not think in this season, God wants us to know him for ourselves. He wants to have a covenantial relationship with us. So we need to seek him by fasting. I'm praying and just bearing our all and our souls to him. So I would say if if you sometimes the church do help, you know, so, but you have to pray for it. So we need to seek him by fasting and praying and just bearing our all and our souls to him. So I would say if if you sometimes the church do help, you know, so, but you have to pray for discernment and pray. Ask the Lord to guide you and to, 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 to direct you to the right church, right? I, I think that's the, that's the way. And just seek him, because I'm not hard for finding you know, our Bible tells us if we seek him, we will we, we find him. Mm. Those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. So that's what we need to do. You know, and, and he also says there, there's gonna become a time when we will want to find him and seek him and he shall not be found, you know, so I will encourage anybody that would be watching this Don't be afraid to re reach out to, 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 to the Savior. Don't tell yourself you have time That's one of the biggest scam the devil has ever tell the world you have time Just wait. Don't worry about it. But that's a lie. If you need, you need to just seek him immediately. Don't wait. It's not hard. It's not a difficult thing. You know, and I want to ask you, Destiny, because there's a lot of people that, that really have a love for God, but they're afraid of, mm -hmm. you know, turning their life over because they don't know how they're going to be able to continue to feed themselves. Because, you know, when you follow Christ, you're going to have to leave a lot of things behind. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think it's not wor worth it because they don't know, you know, becoming a Christian, you just don't know. What advice would you tell or give? to somebody who want to seek the Lord but they're afraid to stop doing all the things you're doing out of fear that they would not know how to provide for themselves the wages of sin is death you understand I was that person too once upon a time who was afraid I didn't want to give up dance hall I love God and want him but I didn't want to give up all of that so I do understand and I do understand but in mm -hmm. truth and in fact the best thing to do is to believe, trust and believe in him and trust and believe in his word. His word says that um, seek, seek God and all his right, seek the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and everything else shall be added. And I am living proof that that is so. When I was in dance hall, all I had was notoriety. It was just popularity there was nothing tangible that I gained from it. You understand? And when I left and seek him, a business was birthed and it is doing well. You understand? He won't leave you in the desert. He will make sure say you are satisfied and you and you have everything, everything that you need. Yeah, if so. he, you know that song. Um, if he dresses the lilies with beauty and splendor, how much more will he love you? You know that song. I think yeah. it's Jaira by by um, Maverick City. Maybe I you know it, but maybe not. Huh? Maybe I know it, or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't recall now. Mm hmm. But yeah, seek him, and and he will give you everything 
everything that your heart desires. That is good for you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you should want. When you ask God for something, you should always say, if it's your will, if it's what you it's want me to have, you know, mm -hmm. you, you show a level of respect, you know, and reverence to him, you know, that you know that you can't do anything without him, you know. And I just mm -hmm. want to tell you, the Lord says, you know, the Lord says, seek him first and everything will be added unto you he's never going to just leave you in the dark you know he tells you to leave behind everything and follow him he's not going to just leave you high and dry you know so i would advise you don't worry about all that kind of stuff what your heart should be focused on is trying to see who this man is and what he's all about and what he will give to you in return so that's what i would say to anyone who is in fear of wondering how they're going to survive he always provides <laughs> provide god provides you know, Destiny, um, I watched this interview with you where that interview, I can see how interesting it was on your face because first of all, he was, tr you were trying to tell him something about what happened to you, you know, and he tried to make, made it seem as if you're your own God, you're, you're better than the God you're speaking of. And it was just so, <laughs> it was just so funny to me, but like looking back at it, <laughs> how do you feel about that, that, that interview? Cause I see it many a times when you just hold yourself and agree to disagree but how did you really feel um ah <laughs> uh, how did i really feel i don't even know how i felt to be honest i i was thinking how how, how can you look around you and really believe that there is no god that is just crazy to me it's just crazy but i just listened to him and 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 after I just prayed for him and I pray that he will eventually find who God is. Because let me tell you something. I've experienced some things. Everything isn't perfect. Everything isn't perfect in my life. Even right now, I'm going through a lot of spiritual warfare. But what God has showed me is that there is a real hell. There is a real devil. And there is an even bigger, realer, and more powerful God. So even though I'm going through the warfare, he has given me strength. And me see darkness, real darkness. I've seen some things where if I should tell you, you wouldn't even believe. It's like I'm open to, to, to a realm that people... I've seen demons. People would think it's, it's not real. People said doppy. I've seen demons real. And I've also seen an angel. And I know for a fact that God is real. God is real. And I think these things have hap these things had to happen for me to know that there is no going back. There is no going back. Because now that I, I know without the shadow of a doubt. There is no going back to my vomit because I'm a very stubborn. I, you said that earlier. I'm the type of person where me always I go back to my vomit. Me always I go back. It's like my heart for learn. So this time God opened my eyes to some things where my notes say there is no going back straight, God. That's yeah. the, I'm smiling because you know, and I it, this gets me so emotional because I can I, I I know what you go through. I know what you've been through. I know what you what you're going through right now in this moment. I can tell because it's the same thing for me, you know, because as I said, we're stubborn people. So God had to show us because we really think we can just live our life, be good and live one foot in, one foot out. Because I was doing the one foot in, one foot out. Try to live 80% good and the other 20% have fun, you know? Mm -hmm. So I know what you've been through. I've seen it too. You know, I've seen, that's what scared me to change my, I know for a fact there's no going back. N nothing. Mm -hmm. If any, any, if you ask me to be the president tomorrow of any country or give me any millions and billions, I don't care about that stuff. Because I really truly understand that when we die and close our eyes, we have somewhere that we're going to go. It's either hell or ever or heaven. And for four days, I experienced torture and pain for four days in hell, mm. you know? And for 30 Whoa. minutes, only 30 minutes, God showed me peace, joy, and happiness. 30 mm. minutes, destiny. So for four days, running around like a crazy person, you know? Mm. So I know for a fact 
you know, if I tell people things, even Christians, if I should share my story with Christians, they too will think you are crazy or something is wrong with you. That's because God has never <laughs> opened their eyes onto the spiritual realm. We didn't know that this thing existed, you know? We didn't ask for it because it's a lot. It's a whole lot because some it's things that you see... You, you just, you know, at one point I was very paranoid, very, mm -hmm. you know, my life, anxiety, all that kind of stuff. But now I finally understand that God just want me to know myself, know the, 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 the kind of love he has for me, know who he created me to be. So I know things. I know mm -hmm. what's going on. You can't play any sort of games because that's why I give the God, I give God all of me. Because mm -hmm. what he has done for me, what he has entrusted in me and showed me destiny, nothing or no one, nothing matters to me more than him and the will that he asked me to do. Amen. Amen. So I get your Amen. story. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because there are two things the devil make you believe that one, he doesn't exist or two, you're supposed to be afraid of him. And God showed me, said, there is nothing to fear because I'm giving power and authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions. So right now, I mean, Ricardo, the strength that I have garnered over these past months, that is straight from God, not me coming not strong. Me not strong, so. Some things from my experience, Minna strong, sir. It's the uh, God, God, give me supernatural strength. And him give me the eye for see. And no, say, listen, there is good and there is evil. Make your choice. There's no going back for me. None whatsoever. Because I know that my God is real. I love you. I love you. See, daddy. I love you. See, <laughs> Yahweh. I love you. See, <laughs> right now, I'm a fully Jesus. There's this artist when me perform and him saying, fully Jesus. I love the talk. Fully Jesus. Fully God. Up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, did you even, did you ever imagine that you're like, you know, because. You're like a top ranking in heaven, you know, God, you, you and God is like, you know, I don't know how to explain it to people for, to not sound, you know, um, <laughs> to not sound a kind of way, but you have to understand, you know, there's levels to this, you know, there's levels to this. And, you know, when God have you on this sort of a level, you can't disappoint God. You can't, you can't allow the devil to come and disappoint, you make it disappoint God, you know, so, so, so destiny, you're doing a great job. Continue on this journey. I can tell you for a fact that life, it gets, it gets even harder because now you know the truth. So now how things hit you, it's really harder than how it would have, it would have hit, hit you before if you never, if you don't really know for a fact that God is really the God him say he is and the devil is who it, what it is. If you, if it, it probably would be different, but no, you see it and you know it kind of play with you on a different level, you know? So I do mm -hmm. understand and I just want to pour some encouragement in you and let you know that you're doing a great job and don't let nobody in this world, which I already know you know, because when God entrusts in you that kind of sort of level of situation in your life, you know better than to go back no matter what, you know? But mm -hmm. I still wanted to let you know that because it gets hard. It gets really it hard. Does. It does. Right now I need to go through another deliverance. Right now. But the thing is, I'm strengthened, strengthened, fully strengthened. Yeah, you know, the Lord, it's the same thing, you know, I don't know how, sometimes I'm amazed, you know, sometimes I get up and I'm like, God, how am I doing this, God? God, how much things have got you in your life? Oh, I'm still, where, is, where, where did I get this? energy to laugh how do i oh god what you do you know sometimes people don't get it they don't understand how our personal relationship with christ is it's like him there so with me right now as a friend as a brother as if anything i want jesus to be for me that's what jesus is for me and that's what he promises you you have to develop it you know anytime i feel certain kind of way i said god why do i feel like this i started talking to a man you know two minutes yeah. i'm a good and i'm like Yo, me could I have this on my life? I mean, I run around like a fool. I try to see True. from the world and they couldn't give it to me. And all I had to do was just open my heart to you, God, and give, look, you know, look, give, give, lay down yeah. my situation for you. I mean, I have this, I mean, good. Yo, that really hurts. <laughs> it really hurts, Destiny. And I'm really, you know, I'm, 
and it, it kind of makes when I can find somebody who who can relate to what my like what I'm going through. It's a whole different situation. Not even Christians. Some Christians don't get it. They don't understand they don't what I'm saying. It. You know, a lot of them like for, for one time the Holy Spirit used me, and I was making a random video and him take take over and just straight in our tongues and giving mm -hmm. a message that he was coming. And I see mm -hmm. Christian on my thing saying, you should not be speaking in tongues. You should not be doing this. And it kind of put me in one depression mood. I'm like, how Christians fear do stuff like this to me, you know, in a sense. And God says, you care about people or you care for do what me tell you for do. You know, so I'm learning every day as I grow. I'm learning every day. And I want to tell anybody who is in a hard or a difficult situation, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. <laughs> And you know what's funny is that like um I have sometimes people will reach out to me randomly, sometimes just even downtown. I'm in the town, sit down, and somebody will come to me and then start talking to me. And when they share some things that they're going through, I realize that there are a lot of people who are who are chained and in bondage and I understand completely what they're going through and like if they should say it to to even a Christian they wouldn't believe they wouldn't believe a lot of Christians don't believe that witchcraft exists even though it's right there in the Bible I don't know what wrong with Christians like that oh you're gonna believe 80% of the Bible and not the rest of the Bible it's the same Bible everything is in the same Bible so oh you don't believe you know what are your thoughts about people who don't Christians who don't believe in deliverance like I I don't even know what to think <laughs> I try not to judge so so I just I just realize that they just don't know they just don't know but the Bible no lie and 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 one of Jesus's biggest ministry was deliverance. So it's it's not judging, so it's, and I get what you're saying, not to judge, because mm -hmm. a lot of them really blind, you know, because the devil mm -hmm. still, you know, the devil kind of is very tricky, you know, he's very tricky. So even the Christians, he's playing with a lot of them, and they don't know that because oh, you're going to not believe in deliverance when Jesus delivered people out towards his ministry. It's in the Bible. You read it in every book you go, you find it. So how mm -hmm. you as a Christian who believes in God don't believe in that part of the Bible. Don't make no sense. Right. Make no sense. That's the it devil. Is real. It is real. It is real. I can tell you, it is real. A lot of things that I did not know existed or didn't really believe. It would, I would hear things and it come here and write out the other ear. But through experience, I realized that there's, a lot a lot of things here real very real god has opened my eyes to a lot yeah i think he did a sweep 2019 2020 he did a waking up you know this corona thing he wake up some people mm -hmm. you know and i'm i'm because I'm, I, I didn't even know you had a whole community of young people i love seeing the young people talking about god it just does something for me and i'm like where did this come from on fire for god <laughs> You know, once upon, a, once upon a time, it was just older people, older people. No, I see so uh, on Facebook, so many young people on fire. There is this um young lady, Shadine Anglin. I, I came across her the other day. I may I tell you, said what she's doing, what she's doing. I said she go out there in another road, like like how Jesus used to go out there in another road and deliver people. This is the ministry that she's doing out in the streets, all every parish trying to free people from bondage and making uh, and my people know God. Lord. And I see many more like her, and I'm saying, Wow, wow, God is doing a new thing. Remnant arise. <laughs> You know, and, and it's not on Latino because he says in the last days, you know, and I know we're in the last days, you know, because he, he you know, God entrusted that in me, you know, so, but if, if I should explain to people how God entrusted in me that he's coming now, like soon, and they would think I'm lying or making up stories, you know, so it don't really make no sense. I will just tell you what God said. I won't tell you how it, it happened because you won't believe, but God, mm -hmm. I know God is on his way. He's coming. The king is coming soon. And it, it kind of play with my heart and emotions, you know, when I, when my family don't want to hear what I have to say when they don't listen you know it kind of play with your rough and differently you know mm -hmm. and then I realized you know what 
I'm not going to let grown adults who don't want to hear take away the little joy I'm getting now and peace because it really right. stresses me out, you know. At one point, the Holy Spirit says it's okay. You can't change no one. You just plant mm -hmm. seeds and and leave it. Plant seed, right. intercede, because I gave you that authority. So anybody that might be watching this video who might feel that way, discouraged, because nobody wants to hear what you have to say or listen to you, just plant the seeds. Don't worry about anything. Amen? Amen. Well said. Yeah, so um, where can people find you, Destiny, like if they want to support you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, um, destiny underscore the matriarch. I still have that um, Destiny Sparta underscore Psychodal page. I I wasn't using it the other day and, and I started using it again. I'm trying so hard to get a name change, but it is almost impossible. <laughs> but I'm still trying because of the verification badge, it's hard for me to, I, I have to contact Instagram support to get the name change and it's hard. So you can find me there. You can also find me on um at scented beauty underscore by by underscore destiny that's my business page i do scented candles and they're made like desserts so you can all go check that out also on facebook kimberly cuvily that's c-u-v-i-l-i-e for the last name and i have another account that says destiny the matriarch so you can find me there so there you have it from the ceo of destiny no scented, scented beauty, beauty by destiny you know she mm -hmm. makes really amazing candles if there's anything you ever need don't be afraid to reach out you know and if you want any kind of advice reach out to destiny or you can reach out to me we're all serving the same kingdom we're all trying to set the captives free and i'm i just want to give you your flowers from now for joining this this initiative to free people who might be seeking spiritual growth spiritual no you just want to know who christ is you know you can have freedom in him you can be exactly who you are now with your sin and come to him he says come as you are just go with how you are don't be afraid you know the devil will tell you that oh no you have time don't listen to him he is a liar okay the lord loves you right now as you are he loves you exactly how you are because he he never told us to get baptized before he pulled us out of our situation he pulled us out of it in the midst of it when we were sinners we were evil and doing wicked things with our lives he still pulled us out so i want you to know the level of love that god has for you and i and the level of hate the devil has for you and i so he will do everything to make you think that he is not real and he's just a character but i tell you from experience this man is real and that mm. is why i go so hard for it for god and that is why i go so hard every day to expose mm. this man so there you have it again from the ceo of scented beauty candles by destiny follow her and support her she makes really amazing desert eatable looking candles so go over there and support her and again destiny woman of god i thank you so much you look so beautiful thank you for all thank the you. effort you make in you know so thank you so much um thank you very to much to love you love you and i'm so proud of you and happy for you god bless you man of god Thank you. I wouldn't. I did. Did you ever imagine your life like this? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I was imagining I'm going to be this big, huge dancehall sensation, this huge dancehall icon. You never know. Say God, I go do a whole 360. I said, no, no, honey, no, honey. That's not where you're gonna be, right? Yeah. I sometimes yeah. I laugh. You know, I'm like a year ago. I'm doing some crazy stuff. Hooker in my house, smoking having random mm -hmm. people hooking up, searching for fulfillment, not knowing that I would change at our own, talking about mm -hmm. God every single day of my life. And I'm honored <laughs> to do it. I am humble to do it, but it's just so ironic how I know I was running. I know we're running from God and we have to mm -hmm. end up go back to him at the end. Right, wow. <laughs> so right, thank wow. you, Destiny. I love you. Take care of yourself. You too, darling. And, and we'll see each other sometime soon. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. God bless. <laughs> Yeah. And there you have it, guys. What's an incredible story. I want to thank you all for tuning in. Do not forget to share, like, and subscribe to this channel so that you can stay in tune with what God is doing in like the earth. I ask you that you turn on your notification bell so that you can be notified of the next show next Sunday. Same place, same time. God bless.
when I was uh, like four years old, I remember that she would play with my male genitals when she was bathing me. You know how a child needs the parent to get yeah. in the bath? Yeah. yeah. And, and so, Ricardo, I don't know why that came in my mind. Uh, and we'll get to it uh, after I had uh, fallen into uh, the belief that having my male genitals removed was going to help me deal with uh, my problems. And she became my friend, and I had a strong attraction to her. And so I was like, oh, God. And I went to the VA mental health care again and said, I made a tragic mistake. I said, I'm attracted to this woman. And then there was another woman that I became fond of. Um, in, your, in your life, did you see that you would have now a wife? Did you see that for yourself? Uh, that was just a blessing. Um, I can subscribe to this channel so that you can stay in tune with what God is doing in my heart.